My subject this morning is avoid being a spiritual guinea pig. Hallelujah. I tell you it looks funny, but it's not going to be funny. Avoid being a spiritual what? Guinea pig. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a very few definitions here. You see, there is, there is a kind of an evil going on today within the body of Christ. A kind of an evil. Where those who are supposed to be free in Christ are oppressed even in the house of God. Amen? Amen. To me, it's an evil. Where people who have maybe received the privilege, because when I use the word maybe, some of us are called and some are not called by God, they are called by men. So when I use the word maybe, you have to understand the context. And those of us who come into such platform, we take advantage of the flock of God. And so we manipulate them as a result of their ignorance. Hallelujah. We so manipulate them that the value of the death of Christ is completely missing. That they know for themselves they can know Christ anymore. The heart of a true preacher or teacher of the word, is that Christ they formed in you. You are supposed to be a person who lives out the Christ that lives within you. Your life is not supposed to be dependent on external voices. Hallelujah. Now, the word guinea pig, just in case you want to get that, it's a small, first of all, guinea pig is a small, stouted, body, short, ear, tailless, domesticated rodent. It's a kind of an animal that is found most in South America. And it's often kept or raised for biological research. Guinea pigs are a group of animals that are kept, like I said, mostly in South America for biological research. In other words, when they want to research on certain drugs, they get a guinea pig. Maybe they want to test for a particular uh, virus or test for a particular drug that has been manufactured. They get a guinea pig and then they punch the needle there. They want to see the effects on the animals before they finally maybe apply it to men or as it is maybe. So guinea pigs are actually Animals that are meant for biological research. Are you still there with me? Now, guinea pig simply means then, it's a subject of research, experimentation, or testing. A guinea pig is a subject of research, experimentation, or testing. Now, when somebody wants to prove a thing, anything he uses to prove what he thinks he's discovering is a guinea pig. Are you getting that? Meaning, if your pastor will have to manipulate you to test his spiritual ability, you become a guinea pig before the pastor. Are you still there with me? You are not meant to be used to prove the gift in anybody. Nobody is meant to grow up and begin to use you as a test ground to prove whether you have the gift of knowledge or the word of prophecy. You are not a guinea pig. Christ died for you, raised you, sealed you. I want to live this life through you. You are not a guinea pig. And you will never be a guinea pig. Are you there with me? There is an evil going on, people. How many of you read about what uh, Pastor Deboy of the Redeemed Church said recently? Hmm? Maybe he didn't get that information, but he made a statement. He said, when you go to pastors and they do 
much matching. That that is taking place of the Holy Spirit when you are going to look for a husband. And somebody has to match you with a man. That thing is taking the place of the Holy Spirit. No pastor has the right to match you with anybody. When you come into such a platform, you are a guinea pig. You should be able to know who your husband is. God should be able to tell you, this is my wife. I can only confirm to you what God has told you. I can't tell you who your husband is. I can't tell you who your wife is. You are not a guinea pig. Are you there with me, somebody? Anytime God speaks a word through a man, he should confirm what is in your spirit. Because think about it. If you are the one getting married, I'm not the one getting married. So God should be able to first tell you who you want to marry. Then I can confirm what God told you is true. The church is not a place for mate matching. There is an evil going on people. I remember some years back, young man was in this fellowship and the prophet came in, took his scarf of a lady and brought the boy clothes and tied both of them together. He said, the Lord has joined you. Mate matching. Now they walked into that because they said the man was a prophet. But the marriage collapsed after about 10 years. Because there was no relationship, no love, no affection, no affinity one bit. It was a scarf wedding. Guinea pigs. Are you, I, I'm not talking to somebody here. You are not a guinea pig. You will never be a spiritual guinea pig to anybody. Stand the liberty where we do our bonds. Your redemption was paid for. Walk in your freedom. You must hear God for yourself. Hallelujah. I can God be talking to somebody He doesn't talk to you. Man, I have only said that except you are a bastard. Huh? If I'm going to be sharing something on that. But remember the message on you are not a spiritual orphan. How many of you remember that? God talks to his people. Praise the living God. So you are not a spiritual guinea pig. Amen? Let's look at how this thing works. Talk with me to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 51. Isaiah 51, I'm going to read uh, just verse number 22. Bible says, from the kingdoms, Thus saith the Lord, of thy Lord the Lord, and thy God that pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as a ground, and as the streets, to them that went over. Know what I mean? Like down, they said to your soul, like down, what's in your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotion, your intellect. In other words, somebody has made you to become a dummy. You can think for yourself. You know what it means to walk over? I'm going to explain. Some of you need to understand what the street of gold means. The street of gold speaks of the divine nature of God. Are you hearing this? So when the Bible talks about the street of God, it's talking about you who are put on the divine nature of God, and it is God alone that is allowed to walk through the street of God. Hallelujah. But somebody has reduced you to a pulpit. Your mind is no longer functioning. They decide everything for you. You are not a spiritual guinea pig. Your soul is not functioning. Your mind is dead. Your emotions are dead. Everything about your life. No, no, no. Somebody has to tell you to eat before you eat. Not at all. Very soon somebody will tell you to go to the loo before you go. There is an evil going on in the body of Christ. Are you still there with me? 
And somebody said, lie down, and you have accepted to lie down. Now he's walking over you. I'm going to explain what it means to walk over. Come with me to the book. Let me still read it from the message translation so that you can pick something there. Therefore, listen. Please, with your splitting headaches, you are not seeing the hangovers that didn't come from drinking wine. Your master, your God, has something to say. Your God has taken up his people's case. Look, I've taken back the drink that sent you really. Man, listen to me. Everything that gives you confusion, God is taking back from you. You have heard it because of wrong talks. You have heard it because of the things you've heard. You have heard it because of prophecies that have come over your life. You are really without drink. You are confused without drink. God is out to take that drink from you. You are not spiritual guinea pigs. No man is permitted to use you for an experiment. Hallelujah. No man drinking from the jug of my anger. God is not angry with you. Are you hearing this? God is not angry with you. Why? Christ died to pacify the anger of God. God is not angry with you. Praise the Lord. If God wants to kill you, remind him about the death of Jesus. Praise the Lord. If if Hezekiah could remind God about what he did, just the work he did, why can't you remind God about Jesus? Hallelujah. And look at what he said. He said, I pass it over to your abuser to drink. Those who order you, down on your ground, so we can walk all over you. And you have to do it. Flat on your ground you wear the dead under your feet. Can you imagine this? When people then manipulate your life, walk over you. I'm going to make you see how they walk over you. All because we have to be Christians. Remember, a few months ago, my uncle, who is now my, spirit, my father, was here when Robert Munion came into meetings. That was in the month of uh, February. Remember that? The guy was not a worshiper. He came here, I saw what happened here. He came down here and knelt down and said, Son, pray for me and let this man from South Africa pray for me. I said, what do you want? He said, but I come in church. You need to pray for me. I didn't know what was in his mind. I said, okay, well, I pray for you. I prayed, and then Munia prayed for him. He went back home and called me and said, I've given my life to Christ. No more idol worship. And look at that. The next, I said, okay, you get a church to attend. Say, yeah, there's a church you need to attend now. I said, okay, fine, go ahead. Not up to a week, I got a call. I said, what is it? He said, my son, I'm in trouble. I said, what is that? He said, the, the prophet of the church said, I have to run for my dear life this year, otherwise I'm not going to see December. I said, run for your dear life there. Where are you running to? He said, I'm just thinking, whether I have to go to Tipe Joshua, I have to go to somewhere. I said, you are not going anywhere. Tell that man he's a liar. Then I asked him, okay, you know the best thing to do? He said, no. Now that you left idol worship and they're asking you to run for like go back to idol worship. He said, no, I don't want to go back. Fine. So you have nowhere to go to. If you come to the house of God and you can't find a solution, you have nowhere else to go to. Tell the man he's a liar. And then I said, get him my phone number. He couldn't get the phone number for us. I told Max, and Max said, man, we can't allow that. That spiritual manipulation. The next week they went to service and he said he had a vision in the night. And somebody has so much problem. And uh, he perceived as my father that I need to pray for to avoid that problem. My father said, I have no pain in my stomach. He said, but if I don't pray for you, you won't survive. And he said, hey, if anything happens to me this year, my son will hold you responsible. That was the end of the debate. Now the man is alive. He left my house just two days ago. Strong and healthy. No stomach problem. That was a spiritual manipulation. By a prophet or so called. You are not a spiritual guinea pig. If you are sick, you will know you are sick. If you are strong, you will know you are strong. Am I talking to somebody?